Sup, dude. Nobody likes Carl Malone because he got a 13-year-old girl pregnant when he was 20, and then to make matters worse, he was absent in both the baby and mother's life. The dude's a giant piece of stinky wet shit. I didn't even want to talk about him, but unfortunately, he's one of the greatest power forwards of all time. It's a shame he's such a weirdo because his game was sick. He'd easily be one of my favorite players if he made better life choices. Two years after he got a middle schooler pregnant, in the 1985 draft, Carl was selected 13th by the Utah Jazz. What a coincidence it was that night. Number. He played 17 seasons with the Jazz and then he joined the Lakers for his final year. Out of 1,444 games with Utah, Carl only missed 10 of them. He was practically immune to injuries, probably because of how great a shape he was in. The guy worked out religiously. He was thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. His competition feared him and so did children. He was feared of course because he was really good, but mostly because he tried to kill people with his elbows. One time he elbowed Isaiah Thomas in the face so hard, Isaiah had to get 40 stitches. But besides throwing bows, Carl Carl was feared because of how talented he was with the basketball. The dude had many skills, his best being his ability to put the ball in the hoop. The all-time scoring list goes as follows. LeBron James is number one with 38,652, then it's Kareem with 38,387, and in third, it's Carl with 36,928, which averages out to 25 points per game over the course of his career. One of the moves that got him all those points was his lethal mid-range shot, more specifically his long two. If you know me, you know I have a fetish for the midi and Carl's is no exception. In fact, it gives me quite the chub. There's something so aesthetically pleasing about it. And not only was it cool to watch, but Carl was deadly with it. From 1996 to 98, he shot 52% from 16 feet to three on 1,163 attempts. For comparison, from 2021 to 2023, Kevin Durant also shot 52% from the same distance. Carl was a much better shooter than a lot of people think. There's a lot of dudes who have it in their head that he was just this dominant paint score, which I mean he was, but he did a lot of damage away from the basket too. Carl's also the poster boy for pick and roll scoring, the simple play that he and Lil John Johnny Stockton dominated with. They were so unstoppable with the pick and roll that they never once missed the playoffs during their time together. And in the 89-90 season, it led to Carl averaging 31 points per game on 56% shooting. During that season, he had a game where he put up 61 points, missing just 5 shots out of 26, while also grabbing 9 offensive rebounds and 9 defense of rebounds. The regular season dominance was there, they just hadn't had much success in the postseason. Leading up to 1990, the John and Carl Jazz had been bounced in the first round three times and in the second round once. They wouldn't get lucky in 1990 either because the Suns sent them home in the first round again, but after that is when things started trending upwards for the Jazz. Carl made his first Western Conference Finals appearance in 1992 against Clyde Drexler and the Trailblazers. He put up a legendary 11 points and 7 rebounds in Game 1, which they lost, and in Game 2 he was a bit better scoring 25 points, but they lost again and were down 2-0 in the series. Now game three is when Carl turned it up a notch. He led the Jazz to their first win behind a 39 point, seven rebounds, seven assist performance, and then continued his dominance in game four, dropping a 30 bomb double-double and getting win number two. Then shit hit the fan. Carl kept putting up numbers, but they lost game five in overtime, and then game six, Carl almost had a 20 point, 20 rebound game, but they lost that one too, getting bounced out of the playoffs. They would go on to make the Western Conference Finals again in 1994 but lost to Hakeem and the Rockets, and then in 1996 they made it again but lost to the Supersonics. At this point, time was ticking. Carl was 33 years old and hadn't been to the finals yet. That is until the 96-97 season. During that season, the mailman won his first MVP. He got selected to the all-defensive first team, and to top it all off, he finally made it past the conference finals. The only problem was he had to go up against Black Jesus in the finals. Carl averaged a double-double with 24 points and 10 rebounds, but Michael Jordan was far too dominant. The Bulls won in six, crushing Carl's dreams. It only gets worse too. The following season, Malone and the Jazz were terrific, making it all the way to the finals again, but there Michael Jordan was waiting for them. The Bulls again won in six, sending the Jazz into a downward spiral. The farthest they made it in the years that followed was the second round. Carl was still very good in his old age though. His commitment to his health allowed him to play at a high level all the way up until 39, then he bitched out and left the Jazz to try to win a championship. Karma got him though. He was injured a lot of that season and didn't get a ring. As a basketball player, Carl's a top three all-time scorer, the all-time free throw leader, two-time MVP, 14-time All-NBA, 14-time All-Star, and four-time All-Defense but as a person, he's the cheese that grows under foreskin. A guy who's a lot more lovable is Scotty Barnes. You can click here to watch the video I made about him. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. Bye, dude.